So, Dean, the challenge of going up against the Patriots, do you have to caution against trying to overthink when you go against them in the postseason? Uh, I don't know if it's overthink. I think you just, um, y you know, you, you can't reinvent the wheel right now. And just got it. We got to play good fundamental defense. And and uh, one of the things about them on offense is they've been they make uh, the the they have a lot of stuff, but they make it simple. And so therefore, you can't uh, overcomplicate yourself on defense because you probably catch yourself in a really bad position. Um, the way I've always looked at it, you know, Tom's got the chalk last, and so. We just got to do a great job. I've seen too many guys try to really over scheme them and do that kind of stuff and get themselves out of position. They're, they're, they got a hundred ways. I mean, they've been together for so long and done it for so long with the same guys doing it. Same quarterback, same head coach, same offensive coordinator, same offensive line coach that they got an answer for everything you've got. So you just got to be able to play your stuff very, very well, be very disciplined in what you do. Uh, that doesn't mean you're not going to try to disguise or something like that, but the point of it is you can't get yourself out of position or they'll really make you pay for it. What skills, what kind of unique skills maybe does Gilroy bring to you guys, assuming he's back in the, in the lineup? Well, he's a cover guy. Uh, you know, that's his skill level. I mean, his, his forte has always been just to be able to get up and play coverage and play man-to-man -man and be able to press guys. and. And hopefully he's healthy enough to do that and that we can use him that way. What did you guys do well last year against them that allowed you to be so successful defensively? You really think I'd tell you? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> um, we just played well. We played well. The disruption you showed in that game, though, that's a big key in this thing just to make him uncomfortable. Well, that's the way it is with really any quarterback, but especially Tom, because it's really, like I say, it's hard to confuse him. He... He's always got the chalk last way I look at it. And so uh, if we can, you know, if we just we just got to play things well. If we do disguise, we got to make sure that if we, when we disguise, we still end up in the right spot that we are supposed to be in at the end of when the ball snapped. Um, I've seen guys, very, very good players, think that they can bait him into something after the ball snapped, and it usually does not pan out well. You might be able to kind of give them a look early on, but once the ball snapped you, but you need to be where you need to be. And, and that's really kind of the emphasis. Is there something that could be said to set the tone early? Because we look at last year's game, Picaro, that hit on, on James White to kind of set the tone for, for that game. Well, I think you got to be physical. Um, and, you know, anytime you play them, but anytime you play anybody, you always want to set the tone early. Uh, but if I remember right, really that game was pretty tight up until second half. For the most part, I had, you know, I don't think it, you know, the the score looks, I think, more deceiving than what it was because I don't, I think early, I don't remember what the score was at halftime or even at the end of the third quarter, but I know they scored on us early, and, uh, you know, and they're very notorious for scoring on first drives, so, you know, we got to try to do a good job of not letting that happen, although it seems like. Like last week, when we give up the first drive, we play better the rest of the game than we do when we get ahead. So uh, against them, you just you gotta you gotta be disciplined. You gotta stay in the game. You can't let them get in a, a level where he can do whatever he wants to do. What's Brady Marcus. like? What's Brady like as far as from a competitive standpoint? Oh. And from how you know, I'm sure like control and the fact that some people are doubting him going to playoffs. Yeah, I would never doubt this guy. I'm telling you, I, I'd never doubt him. He is one of the most competitive people I've ever been around. He gives you this little boyish charm look and stuff on TV and all that kind of stuff. That's so far from what he is as a competitor on the field. I mean, I used to watch him and Vrabel and Brewski and those guys go at it during practice, and I mean, he didn't back down. You know, Vrabel and Brewski and Willie and those guys used to get after a lot of guys, and they'd kind of, you know, back off a little bit, not 12. I mean, he's a competitive, competitive guy, studies everything. I mean, he's everything you want in a football player. You guys have faced some teams this year, like New Orleans and Carolina, who give pretty much all of their targets to one or two guys. And you face some teams that like to spread it around a lot more than that. What, what's sort of the difference as you prepare for a team that kind of all goes to one or two people versus a team that does spread it around? Well, you're always a little 
Larry, I know you want to double guys and do that kind of stuff, and you're always afraid that the other guy somehow is gonna gonna get you. But it's just it's just a matter of where you got to pay your attention. You know, if you got a guy that's gonna be like a rap player who doesn't really have anybody and he's a free player, you know, generally speaking, if if uh, you know, you might tell him to lean to this guy a little bit or something like that. But you know, overall, it just it, it really kind of depends on. The, you're always talking about the passing game, but everybody kind of forgets there's a running game usually involved in here. And with the Patriots, it's a very, very good running game. It's a three-headed monster. All three of those backs are good. You know, they may not have a statistic of like a Derrick Henry, but when you add all three guys together and the number of times they catch the ball and stuff, they're a very impressive group. So it's it's you got to be very careful showing all your attention to somebody and then neglecting the run. How's Marcus done as, as Tom Brady? Uh, this weekend in general, how has he done kind of in that role as a, as a scout guy? It, it, he's, he's been great. I, my hat is off to that guy. Um, you know, that's, he's, he gets all my respect uh, as, a, as a person, as a player, as a team member. And he's done a great job, obviously, down there and just taking the role and, and giving us absolutely the best look you could possibly get. Mike's talked a couple times the last few days about the need for better tackling after the last couple weeks. How, how do you... How do you impress that upon guys in a practice at this time of the year? Well, I think the biggest thing is, yeah, because you can't go out and you're not going to tackle and live tackle and do all that kind of stuff now. But um, last week was really disappointing because up until then I thought, you know, we'd had a few here and there, and which everybody's going to have in the league. But we had a, uh, a lot more last week than what we had normally. And I think a little bit of that was due to focus. Um, and that's one of the things that I don't think we're going to have a tough time having these guys focus this week. The biggest thing on tackling is staying on your feet and not diving. When you guys usually see guys miss tackles, it's because they're trying to, you know, dive at the guy and tackle and not just get on their feet and just wrap the guy up. It doesn't have to be a big hit. We just need a guy to be on the ground at the end of the play. Um, so I think it's just an emphasis, and I think it's also a, a focus by the players. You've got veterans that have played in playoff games before. You've got other guys who be their first time do you spend time trying to or can you do anything to get them ready for maybe the intensity I the don't rise? think so I think you're that'd be over coaching I think you got prepared it's just like it's if we've done the right thing all year then that's what we ought to be doing now if I'm a coach and I'm coaching I don't know that I should coach any different in the playoffs than what I coach to try to get to the playoffs it's like guys always saying, well, I'm going to work harder this week. Well, that means that you didn't work as hard last week. That doesn't make any sense to me. So it's, it's to me, it's, it's, yeah, it's a playoff game. It's another game. And it's win or go home. And, and uh, I, but I should focus on this game just like I focused on Tampa Bay a few weeks ago or Carolina or anybody else. That's what I'm supposed to do as a coach, and I think that's what you should do as a player. I think the other thing, one thing I learned from Bill when I went to New England and, and coming out of college and, Went to that first Super Bowl my first year. You know, I'm all hyped up like the players. And one thing he did such a great job of getting preparing for that game was making it. It's a Super Bowl. You can't ignore that. But don't have all your anxiety. Don't get all pumped up. And then all of a sudden, after five minutes, you're drained because you've just been so hyped up. you got to have a routine. Whatever your routine has been all year, that's what your routine should be here. And it's the same way as a coach.